Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. This is the sixth hermetic principle of cause and effect. So there is no such thing as chance. Your destiny is applied to you to test your soul and see if you are worthy of your immortality. And this is a covenant and agreement each soul accepted. We see this application of cause and effect to our existence also related in the Colburn Bible, where it states, Destiny may be likened to a man who must travel to a distant city, whether or not he wishes to make the journey, the destination being his destiny. He may choose whether to go by way of a river or by way of a plain, whether across mountains or through forests, on foot or horseback, slow or fast, and whatever befalls because of this decision is fate. If a tree falls on him because he chose the forest path, it was fated. For luck is an element of fate. Destiny leaves no choice. Fate gives limited choice, which may be good or bad, but it cannot be averted. What is fated must be, for at no point can there be any turning back. It is when our tests are done at the end of a cycle and we have seen through these tests in truth with strength of heart, the soul is rewarded with immortality. It is then the soul can be at rest and there can be peace within our hearts. As it says in Psalms 116.7, Return unto your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. 116 equals 8, which equates to immortality on the Egyptian number key, and 7 equals the ethereal soul. The Hindu texts relay this chakra point is where the nectar Amrita drips down from the bindu symbolized on the mandala and is split into either a pure form or a poison. However, it is also known as the purification center, so therefore symbolic of redemption. Amrita is a Sanskrit word that literally means immortality and is often referred to in Hindu texts as nectar. The word's earliest occurrence is found in the Rig Veda, where it is also referred to as soma, the drink which bestows immortality upon the gods. The Greeks called this nectar ambrosia and it carries the same meaning. So we can see this energy point is very important as it determines whether we continue this cycle of the soul and experience immortality and zeptepi or whether we become accustomed to the taste of the poison and experience death and decay. A bindu dot in a mandala or mantra is symbolic for the manifesting point of that chakra. So we see this chakra is very much tied to the immortality of the soul. And it is not only in the mental projection of our will from the third eye chakra, but the expression of it onto the material plane that grants or denies our immortality. This chakra is also associated with the element of ether and as such shows the connection between the third eye chakra that is situated completely in the ethereal and the heart chakra which is our energy point that is anchored between the ethereal and physical plane. At the bottom of the card we see the male and female twin souls are depicted about to take their covenant with the divine. The male soul is on the left and we can see that he is now wearing on his shirt the flowers that were above his head in the magician card. The female twin soul on the right has the blue and white flowers on her shirt, symbolic for her blue dress and white pillar in the High Priestess card. These pillars are also represented on the Hierophant card and the Justice card, for again, they are symbolic of the veil between the physical and ethereal planes. And on the Hierophant card, they are showing that the energetic force of the Hierophant stands between the two pillars and represents the conscious acknowledgement of this pledge with the divine before entry to the material plane is granted. On top of the pillars we see a flourish on each pole. 
This is representing the ethereal form of the divine male and female twin souls. They are clearly depicted differently to ensure a distinction between them is made. The Hierophant points his two fingers upwards to indicate both the twin souls are answerable only to the divine. However, the two crossed keys show each soul's destinies are also entwined and they sit in front of the Hierophant showing that the covenant with each twin soul is also overseen by God. On each side of the keys we see a disc divided into four parts equating to eight pieces. Eight represents their immortal soul and shows that their immortality is bound within their covenant to the divine. So now we have eight shown on each side of the key representing the immortal soul of the male and female twin souls. However, if we look on the shoes of the Hierophant, we have our third eight. So now we have the two immortal twin souls represented and the third eight is symbolic of their immortality being connected to the Hierophant and their covenant. We also see the discs can represent six, which is symbolic of the physical form. And when we add them together, we again get 12. And let us not forget that the Fibonacci sequence also equates to a 12. As mentioned previously, 12 is symbolic of the divine male and female twin soul before they have reunited back with God consciousness. We also see 12 depicted on the front of the Hierophant's garments with the three crosses. Together, this equates to 24. If we divide 24 by the Trinity, we get 8 once again. He holds the triple cross, or otherwise known as the papal cross. The three bars of the cross represent the Trinity of the divine and the male and female twin soul. We see the Hierophant holds this cross in his hand, symbolic for the covenant he holds between them all. His crown with 18 spikes is depicting that it is through this covenant they will reach the reunification with the divine and transform into the divine number of nine. And finally, we see again in this verse 2 Corinthians 5.10, it states, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may be recompensed for things done in his body, according to what he has done, whether it be good or bad. We can see the covenant represented in this verse by the number five, and again the infinite cycle of the twin souls and their covenants are represented in the number ten. So now we understand the Hierophant, and that he is not a religious figure, but instead is symbolic of our own individual soul agreements with the divine. So now the divine twin souls have agreed to uphold their covenant with the divine upon being manifest onto the physical plane. In the next video, we will look at the number six card, the lovers.